right, today is Wednesday the what? Fourth? Fourth. Wednesday, 4 September 2013, Microeconomics. That's for the video. So I know what that one What's on your mind? Sure. On uh, Appendix B for number one, the mm -hmm. quantitative average or Q average, that how you find that is when you take the quantity supply, quantity demand, and add them together by that two. Yep. Okay. And then also for part two of that question, how did you find the exact number of the shortage? You take the quantity. Hey, you replug the number back I'm in. Sorry, you take the, the price that's given. Mm -hmm. And you plug that back into the market demand. Yeah. And get yeah. the quantity demand in, market supply, get quantity supply. And the difference between the two is between the Between your original answer and the second one? Let's do one just for the hell of it. Okay. Okay. I got <laughs> All right. Here, just for practice, quantity demand. There are 10,000 buyers. And the words sellers and producers are interchangeable, right? That's correct. Right. Sellers and producers are interchangeable. Quantity <coughs> supply minus 21 plus 4P, there are 10 sellers. Solve for the equilibrium price and quantity. Let's do that first. Can you do that off the top of your head, okay, everybody? First, you get the demand equation for the entire market. It's this times 10,000. comfortable with what I just did. Mm -hmm. 10,000 times 100. 10,000 times negative 5P. For sellers, I'm going to take this individual equation and multiply it by 10 sellers. So my supply is going to be 10 times negative 21, 10 times positive 4P. So I'm going to set these two equations equal to each other. I've got one equation with one unknown. I'm going to solve for the value of P. I'm going to move all the P terms over to one side. And I'll subtract or add back over here. 1 million, 210. Move the P term over here, I get 50,000 plus 40. So 50,000 and 40. So my equilibrium price divided by 50,040. See what that is. 19.9. Well, you can round the whole thing up because the following number after the 8 is also an 8. So, okay. so we'll call it $19.99, and we know it's not absolutely precise. I also want to test um, are we going to be within so many numbers of that? Or are there all oh, multiple yeah. choice? So there are all multiple space. choice, and I won't put the answers close together. Okay. Yeah, It'll be, be like a little squiggle lines instead of equals. Well, no, the, your choices will be an equilibrium price of two dollars, twenty dollars, eighty dollars, a thousand. Okay, so the answers themselves won't be with a small increments. Right, exactly. Everybody okay so far? Have we got equilibrium price? Not sure. Where does it break down? Tell me where it breaks down for you. Right where you um, you multiply. Up here? Yes. Okay. I'm going to multiply 10 times this equation. So 10 times minus 21 is negative 210. And then I'm going to multiply 10 times plus 4P. 10 times 4 is 40 plus 40P. Okay? 
Same thing over here. Once I get the two equations set equal to each other, I'm going to take the part that has the p element in it, I'm going to move that over here, so I get all the p terms on one side, and I'm going to take this 210 negative, I'm going to move it over here by adding it to each side. Okay? So we're just finding the equilibrium? Right now, yeah. Okay, not the price floor. Not, I haven't put a floor or ceiling in yet. Other questions? How do I find Q star, the equilibrium quantity? Plug 19 back into the quant demand equation. Right. I'm going to plug this equilibrium price in For P. back up here and also over here because I want to I check them. Are you still setting them equal to each other? No. Okay. I'm going to say, well, over here, uh, minus 210 plus 40 times this price. Let's see what I get for that. I got 590 something. 580 something. 590? I got 379. 379. I might have put that on my calculator. 500 and something. 589. 589? Yeah. So here I get 589.1. Oh, actually, for Q it's 500. Wait. It's 589.6. Huh? 589.6. 6. Okay. Then let's go back over here and plug it in on the demand equation. So I get 1 million minus 50,000 times 1999. 500? Yes. I get 500 here. So we have some rounding differences in here and on a pretty good scale. Anybody else confirm that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what would I take to be my approximate equilibrium quantity? 544. Good. I'm going to add this to this and divide by 2. Just find the average. 590, 500. I would say eh, 544. 544, 545, something like that. 544. Point something. So, so it's going to be a cute little asterisk above it? Yeah. So here's my equilibrium quantity. Here's my equilibrium price. That's what I've been trying to get. Questions? Anybody? You said that's your equilibrium. Quantity, and then you said equilibrium price, just a number? Yeah. Let's see what this looks like graphically, give or take. This is an equilibrium, the demand and supply curve, where I've got a price of 1999 and a quantity of about 544, 545. So that's what I'm looking at if visuals help. Sir? So then going on from that one at price floor is set below equilibrium? That's what I'm going to next. Right, cool. Give me a second. <clears throat> situation, let me, let me move this over a little bit. We know this is our equilibrium. Price of 1999, quantity of 544. Suppose we're now told there is a price floor of $20.02. $20.02 is up here somewhere, higher than this. This is a price floor, and it is above equilibrium. What does that cause? Surplus. Surplus. Remember, this is supply, this is demand. 
Here's the quantity supplied. Here's the quantity demanded. We got more for sale than people want to buy. Or if you want to remember it this way, when the price floor is greater than the equilibrium price, the result is a surplus. Everybody okay with that so far? Question now is, how big is this surplus? Now I'm going to go back and take this floor, this price, and plug it in to the demand and the supply equations. The market demand, right? Now the market demand was what? One million minus what? 50,000 P. So plug $20.02 in for P. Tell me what you get. somewhere up here with a negative number. So basically that says people don't want any, that price is too high. What about supply? The supply curve was minus 210 plus 40p, right? So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to plug in the $20.02 there. About 591. Yeah. So the quantity demanded is zero, the quantity supplied is 591. What does that mean? They're not buying. It means there's 591 of them being produced and offered for sale, nobody wants them. That's your surplus, 591. Okay. Quantity demanded is zero. Quantity supplied is 591. The result is a surplus of 591 units. Go ahead. Just to clear it up, I'm pretty sure it might be a question. Um, price floor means it can't go below that price? That's correct. Okay, for some reason, I thought that's like the minimal, like it had to be set on there. If the price floor is set for some reason, no. Price floor is a minimum legal price. If you sell below the floor, I put you in jail. Okay. Price ceiling the other way. Okay. Can't charge above the price. So if the, if the price ceiling on gasoline was fourteen dollars a gallon, what effect would that have on the market? Mm -hmm. Not much because of some zero. Thing. We'd still be at our equilibrium price, which is way below fourteen dollars a gallon. Mm -hmm. So when the price ceiling is above equilibrium. It doesn't have any effect at all. That was a few of those appendix uh, A. I yeah. was sitting there trying to like think mm -hmm. maybe you wrote down the answer in a weird way. I thought nope. you were trying to trick it. No, nope. not, not on that one anyway. Yeah, I spent 10 minutes before I realized that. That's yeah. good. You're getting your money for it. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> any other questions on this equilibrium? Other questions? Anybody? So if that would have been a shortage instead of a surplus, 
to find out what exactly the shortage was. Um, same process. Same process. Take your price ceiling, plug it in for the two equations. And then the supply is going to be your answer? Well, <coughs> quantity, supply? quantity supplied will be less than quantity demanded. Okay. But nothing can ever be less than zero. Okay. okay. Well, so quantity supplied would have to be less than quantity demanded. How about? That would be if you had a market like this, and the equilibrium price was $19.99, mm -hmm. and the price ceiling was $15. Mm -hmm. You can't go above the ceiling. Okay. So you're stuck. You've got this price to the supply curve, gives you this quantity supply. This price to the demand curve, gives you this quantity demanded. You got people trying to buy more than there is available for sale, so you have a shortage. Oh, okay. Well, it stops right there where the quantity supply is. That's where they stop making them. Yeah. And they want this many, but okay. Good. That's not better. Like that sounded like aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, a little bit. Cool. Damn. Damn. <laughs> so that was a multiple choice question without um, multiple choice oh, answers as numbers. Without numbers? Yeah, you can just. I would say that uh, there's a there's a shortage. Or I might say the quantity demanded exceeds the quantity supply. Both would be correct. Good. So you get, now you get the idea that there's several ways to put a correct answer for this. So you have to read carefully.